Hey everyone, uh, Russell here, 36 stories high in the beautiful city of Singapore. I wanted to do a quick little video to uh, accompany the source code that I've just posted. Uh, just some simple code that essentially allows you to automatically move to your backup primary after your primary fails on Tableau server. So let me show you what I got here. Uh, we'll go ahead and get a bunch of virtual machines up. Essentially have four, just like you need for uh, a cluster. I have a primary, which is what's running right now. There's the IP address, it's 47. I have two workers, uh, 48 and 49. And then I have a backup primary that's also running, running on IP uh, 46 here. And you can see all four machines up and running. The primary actually I just recovered. Uh, I turned it off to do a little test and then I brought it back up. So I told it, okay, you are now once more the primary by pointing itself to its own IP address as the primary and then the IP address of the secondary right here. And then I restarted the service. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like right here. I've logged into the server already, and as you can see, this is Tableau Server 9. Just thought that would be fun. Here are my two workers, 48 and 49. Worker 1 is actually my primary. That's the first window that I showed you, the one that is right here. So the code itself, let's take a quick look at that. I'm not going to go through all of it. You can go out and grab it on GitHub, but uh, here essentially is the core of what's going on. I'm plugging in the IP address of a primary, and I'm plugging in the IP address of a backup primary. Now, these aren't the same IP addresses that we were just looking at. This is some other source code or another machine where I was doing the developing, but you get the idea. I can configure the number of consecutive failures in a row within a certain amount of time, in this case 60 seconds, and then I can also configure how often we're actually going to check the primary. The way we check the primary is we hit a specific file on the machine through the gateway. If that file is there, we assume all is well. If that file is not there, well then, Houston, we may have a problem. So let's actually go in, uh, and take a look at what this looks like. All of my machines are running just fine right now. Uh, why don't I go ahead actually and, and sign out here as well. We'll come back to that later. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on my backup primary. And unfortunately, I suspect that the text isn't going to render especially well here. Here's the same code that we were looking at, but my primary is 47 and my backup primary is 46. I'm going to go ahead and start this little script. It's written in node, so we'll type node and then app and let that run. And you can see it is monitoring 192, 168, 203, 47, and it's going after that fave icon. It's going to do that every 15 seconds. So every 15 seconds, we're going to see something that says, you know, hooray, I got that file and everything as well. We'll let this do it, uh, do its thing for, oh, two or three runs. I'm going to go silent here and I may even speed this up a little bit so you don't have to sit here for 45 seconds. All right, cool. And now let's start playing. I'm actually going to come over to my, uh, my primary and I'm going to start maybe simulating some network problems. You know, I'll go to the machine and why don't I pause it and we'll wait for five or 10 seconds and see uh, that we should anyway, see an error that's getting thrown. And we'll start sort of a countdown, number of failures until I go into failover mode. We'll wait for one of them to appear, and then I'll go ahead and turn the machine back on. In fact, if I turn it back on right now, we'll probably see what we need to. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Oh, phooey. Shame on me. I should have let it fail a little while longer. So I just wasted some time. We'll go ahead and pause again and actually wait until the next one comes back and fails. This is what happens when you're a little bit too quick. There we go. Got an error. I'll unpause us and it sees, okay, we're back in shape again. 
So we're pinging, we're pinging, and everything is coming back. I'm actually going to go ahead and completely let it fail now. So I'm literally going to turn off the primary. We'll sort of move this over here maybe so you can get a feel for what's going on with CPU. In fact, what I should do is bring up this little window, maybe put it over here so you can really get a feel for what's going on with CPU even on this machine. All right, so let's get at it. I'm going to go ahead and send a shutdown signal to this machine. Slowing down, it will eventually stop. And now I'm actually going to go mute, and you can just kind of watch what happens here. Okay, so we are done. Uh, hopefully you have learned a very important lesson, and that is that running four nodes of Tableau Server on one machine, uh, the machine that I'm testing on happens to have uh, one CPU with only four cores. Hopefully you've, lo you've learned that that is not a particularly good idea, but what the hell? Well, I just decided to go ahead and test it out on this machine. Here's essentially what happened. Uh, we were pinging our machine. It was live. When it finally went down, when I turned it off, we actually automatically, with our little script, fired tab admin fail over primary. We pointed the primary at our backup, at the 46. Our secondary primary, which was dead, uh, became the 47 machine that I'm not even showing you right here. Then, again, with our little script, we re-enabled the Tableau server on this machine. The actual Windows service, part of the Knowledge Base article and help docs that I'm sure you've read, tell you to disable the Tableau Windows service. I had done that on my machine, so we needed to re-enable it. That's what's happening right here. And then it's just a matter of restarting the server. Uh, when we restart the server, you'll see that it actually figured out the fact that my old primary, Worker 1, was no longer part of the cluster. Therefore, anything that had to do with licensing on that server was actually removed. We're not going to charge you for that license anymore. 
and now we're done. Let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. We'll log into uh, a different node. How about 46? Because that's actually where our uh, our backup primary is running now. And we'll go ahead and log in. And let's take a look at status. And now you can see that instead of worker one, we have the 46 machine acting as primary with our workers still doing all the stuff that they did. So that is, uh, that is it. Hope that was fun and, uh, and helpful. Uh, and hope you uh, get a good feel for how you can write a do-it-yourself backup primary script to do automatic failover for yourself.